What is going on everybody? Welcome back to MG Marine Tech. If I'm being honest with you guys, this will be the third time that I have filmed this exact topic. Uh, the first two times I got into editing and I just wasn't happy with the content. Here we are again. Hopefully this time I can do better for you guys. What we're gonna be talking about today are third-party waypoints. Now, I classify third-party waypoints as waypoints that you create outside of your Garmin unit and outside of Active Captain. What I'm gonna be showing you guys today is a couple of really cool things you can do with Google Earth. I'll show you guys how you can create waypoints in Google Earth, how you can import waypoints into Google Earth, export waypoints out of Google Earth, and then ultimately at the end of the day, how to get those waypoints that you created in Google Earth onto either your Active Captain app so you can sync to your Garmin unit or to your Garmin unit directly via a SD card. Lots to cover in today's video. So stay tuned, and if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, and let's get into today's video. All right, guys, so let's dive right into today's video. Now, Google Earth, extremely powerful tool when it comes to this kind of thing. Um, I use this a lot when planning ahead for a fishing trip, especially on bodies of water that don't have any mapping, or it's outdated mapping, or inaccurate mapping, etc. Whatever it may be, uh, this is my go-to tool to kind of look at a body of water, um, now, I use this in conjunction with other tools, you know, such as Navionics app, um, Active Captain app, where I can actually look at the actual charts. But when a lake doesn't have any charts on it, this is my go to tool. And for creating waypoints, editing waypoints, and managing waypoints, Google Earth is an extremely powerful tool for that. Some of the reasons why I like it going back to a scenario that played out a couple weeks ago, I was up in Traverse City um, and we were staying on a little lake called Bass Lake. It had no Garmin mapping, so I had really no idea of the layout of the lake other than some of the islands that were in the lake. And I will throw up what my current Garmin map looks like so you guys can see. No charts on this, no contour depths, etc. other than some of the islands. What we'll do is jump over here to Google Earth, and as you can see, I'm using kind of like the satellite overview. So it's the real picture, if you will. Um, it will zoom into this lake. And uh, it won't take long. So here we are. It's Bass Lake right here. And up again, um, you can see that there's some of the islands that were called out in the Garmin maps, but none of the contours, etc. Now, the nice thing about this Google Earth imaging is you can really start to see the lake come alive with sandbars, points, etc. So that is one of the beautiful things about that. Now, getting to the point of creating waypoints. Uh, very, very simple and very, very straightforward. You simply come down here to this add place marker. When you click this add place marker, um, your, your pointer will come up to a crosshairs. And if you single click, that will create a new waypoint or place marker in that exact spot. And so you can really zoom in and get, get pretty detailed on this. Now, if you click and hold, your uh, pointer will turn into a hand and you can still drag the map around. So that's a handy little feature. You can still zoom in and out. So I'm going to create a place marker or waypoint right here on this little sand flat. And then it will prompt you to create a project or save it to a project. Think of these projects as folders. So you can start to use these folders to really manage your waypoints very, very well, such as lake by lake basis um, or however you guys want to do it. So I'm going to do uh, click on the drop down and create a new project. This is Bass Lake, so I'm just going to label this as Bass Lake. And again, this is a, uh, you can think of it as a folder that all of these waypoints will get saved under. Once you create the project you want to save it to, you can do things such as add pictures if you have them, um, change the name of the waypoint. So this one, I'm just going to name it as Sand uh, Flat. Um, you can add a little descriptions, change what the waypoint looks like. Uh, now, I don't know exactly how those will transfer over onto the Garmin unit, so I just keep it with the stock one. Um, and then you can even um, manually change latitude, longitude, etc. And this is another good way if you have a latitude, longitude of different waypoints, you can click anywhere on the map, go in here, edit them, and it will pop up in the new location. And that was how you would manually enter a waypoint. But um, so say we like this waypoint where it is at, simply click click the back button, you can see that our sand flat waypoint populates under our Bass Lake project. And you can 
continue to do this. So finding another place, like here's a sandbar. You know, I'd, I'd like to hit this sandbar. So I'm gonna click right there and I'll enable that one, sandbar. Clicking the back, or you can even click the enter button. Um, and then uh, I like this little shallow flat over here. It looks like it has some weeds on it. Once we zoom in, there's a little bit of texture in there. I'll click on there and that will be shallow flat. So we have three different waypoints created on this single bass lake. Here comes another cool feature, extremely cool, especially when you guys have, you know, DNR offices or conservation offices that have a really good fishing program where they go out and they drop fishing attractors or fish attractors in bodies of water and then they waypoint them and then they will oftentimes provide these um, files of all these waypoints for people to come fish. So that's exactly what we have here. This is a Fish Attractor GPX Files website that is brought to you by the Missouri Department of Conservation. And they have all of these different lakes where they have dropped these fish attractors in lakes and then waypointed them and they present them as a GPX file. Now, going into GPX files, when you are trying to bring in waypoints or third-party waypoints into a Garmin unit, you have to have them in a GPX format. Uh, when you are trying to bring in waypoints into Google Earth, you have to has a, have them as a KML format. So keep those two things in mind because they're very important and they will not work uh, if they are the, not the correct format. What I'm going to show you guys next is how you can take any one of these uh, files and bring all the waypoints that are in this file into Google Earth so that you can view them, edit them, delete them, whatever it may be you want to do. First thing we have to do is simply download this folder. I'm gonna use this Norfolk Lake GPX as an example. Simply click on it. It's gonna go into our downloads folder as a zip file. So it's a, it's a folder that is zipped, it's a little bit compressed. Now you cannot simply take this zipped file into Google Earth because we have to do a couple of different things. First, we have to extract it from the zip folder. And then secondly, we have to convert it from a GPX to a KML. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. We're just gonna click this show in folder and here is where it got downloaded to. Again, it's in our downloads folder. I'm going to right click on this and your uh, view here may be a little bit different. I've got a third party app for extracting files, but all right, camera shut off there for a second, but we are back at it. I extracted this folder into, I'll do it again for you guys. So I'm gonna extract this folder into my waypoints folder. And then I'm going to click yes to all since I've already done this. Um, now, now we have to convert that GPX file to KML. And that is where this website comes into play. It's called KML to GPX. I will link it below so that you guys can use it. And we have to select the conversion how we want to go. So we're going to go uh, GPX to KML since Google Earth needs a KML file. And then we're going to choose the file. So this, remember, I um, exported it to my waypoints folder. So I'm gonna simply click on my waypoints folder and here it is right here, Norfolk GPX. So that is the GPX file that we downloaded and then unzipped or uncompressed out of its original folder. We're gonna hit open. It'll populate in here under convert file. And then we go to the options. We're simply looking at the waypoints. We don't need the tracks or the routes and we hit convert. Very, very simple process. It only takes a second or two to convert all of these. And then the new file is located here under this little link. You simply click on the here and it too will go into our downloads folder. So right there, Norfolk, a bunch of numbers, and then it's .kml. So this file right here can be imported into our Google Earth. Hopping back over to Google Earth, we can now import this. We have to create a new project for this. So to get back to our project feature, you can either click this little icon right here, which is your project feature, or go to your menu and go to projects. And you'll see here are my existing projects that I have going on. We are going to create a new project. From the drop down. we are going to import KML file from computer. This pops up. We are currently under our waypoints folder. Now again, these are not the correct uh, files because they are the GPX files. We have to go find the KML file that we converted from the GPX file, which is right here back in our downloads folder. We open that and it will zoom out and it's going to zoom into the area with all the waypoints. 
The project is named after the file that you imported. You can go and change this. I'm just going to name it Norfolk Lake. Once I can spell here. All this jazz in here, we don't really need. Get rid of that. And then under the project, there is a waypoints folder. So all of the waypoints are in here. There's a ton of them. And as you you know go scroll over them, they will kind of pop up on the screen on the map as to where they are at. Or you can you know double click on one, it's going to zoom into that area. So say we kind of want to look into this area over here. We can find these in the map. So 44 right there. If you click on this little pencil, that will allow you to edit the feature. And this is where you can rename them. So maybe this is a brush pile we heard from the locals or whatever it may be. You can relabel these however you want. Add pictures again, descriptions, change the, um, you know, the icon, the colors, all this stuff, you know, change latitude, longitude, all that stuff is the same as before. And there we go, we hit back, that is saved. So same process, you can go through all this stuff. You can even um, go in and delete these if you wanted to. Say this number four, we didn't need it. Uh, there's a little more options, just little three dots right here. You click on that, it allows you to then delete that waypoint. So you can go through, delete the ones you don't want to have on there, whatever it may be. Now comes the fun part. We can export these projects individually as KML files that we can then convert into a GPX file using the same website as before to get onto our um, Garmin unit. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. So I am not gonna do that Norfolk Lake. I'm gonna do these, I'm gonna do these, uh, you know, three waypoints we have up here. So I'm gonna go back to my projects and we are gonna click on the Bass Lake project. And now our Bass Lake project is open. And to export these out, you have to go into your project and then going back up to the more actions features, we are going to export as a KML file. This too will go to our downloads folder and it will be labeled as our project or the folder. So we have basslake.kml. Again, your Garmin unit will not accept the KML file. Going back to our KML to GPX, I'm just gonna go one step back to reload this website. We will have to go from KML to GPX, choose our folder or our file, and that got saved into our downloads folder. Here it is, basslake.kml. Open that up, that's populated in there. We don't need the tracks. And again, simply convert it. Only takes a second, same process as before. Download it again. And this too will be saved into our downloads folder. And this file right here, this basslake.gpx, can it now be simply uploaded either to your uh, Active Captain app or your um, unit itself via an SD card. So I'm gonna show you both of those processes right now. The first way that I'm gonna show you guys how to get your GPX files to your Garmin unit is via Active Captain app. Um, I recently found out about this feature and it is extremely cool. So I figured I'd show you guys the cool way first. It involves simply emailing yourself your GPX file that you just created. So that's exactly what we're, what we're gonna do here. I'm just gonna simply uh, send this to myself and then it doesn't really need that. So we're gonna attach the file. Again, this was in our downloads and it's our basslake.gpx. Select that, open it and send it away. Click OK. And there we go, we have it. So now I'm gonna jump over and do some screen recording on my phone and show you guys how to then open this up via your Active Captain app, which once it is loaded into your app, you will then be able to sync it to your unit just like you would normally and transfer the waypoints that way. All right guys, so this process is pretty simple, something I didn't really know about, but what I did is emailed the file to myself as the GPX file. Uh, go ahead, open that email, and then you can open up the actual attachment. This is what I'm going to do right here. Once you open this attachment at the top right corner, there will be a box with an arrow sticking out of it. Once you click on that, it will give you options as to what you can do. Now, take a side note here is that your Active Captain app must be open in the background. So I will open up the Active Captain app right here. 
uh, or open this file with the Active Captain app, I should say. Once you do this, it will give you an option to import user data. Once you click import, it will simply import this GPX file and goes through its little deal. And there we go. Uh, pretty simple, easy way to do that. And then once you um, sync your Active Captain app with your unit, all these waypoints will transfer onto your unit. For the second process of getting your waypoints from Google Earth onto your unit is via your SD card. So you're gonna need a couple of things. Obviously you'll need an SD card that's appropriate for your unit, uh, no larger than 32 gigabytes, and I believe a minimum of eight gigabytes. But uh, you will also need some kind of card adapter if your laptop or computer does not read these micro SD cards. So I'm going to put this together off camera because it's easier to do with two hands. And then I will show you guys how to get these waypoints onto your unit via the SD card. And as you can see, no waypoints on here right now. So uh, shortly there will be. We have both of our folders up here right now. The one on the right, this is our Garmin SD card. And on the left, this is our downloads folder. Again, this is uh, the file that we downloaded from our converter site. So it went from the KML of the uh, Google Earth to GPX, which is the format that you need for Garmin. To transfer this over, we can simply click on the appropriate file, drag and drop, but it has to go to the base or the root uh, root of the SD card. It can't go into your Garmin folder, etc. It's got to go into the very uh, first part of the SD card. So strictly on to the root of the folder. So we can exit this out and I'm going to try to do this with one hand. It's a little bit difficult. So I can remove my adapter um, and fumble around, remove my SD card, go over to my unit, which doesn't have those on there, insert the SD card, and it will pop up and then the next step we are going to do is manage user data. Now from there, we need to make sure that the file type is GPX. It can also be on ADM, but we want GPX since that's the file we are going from. And then there are two important um, options that you can choose from. There's re replace from card and merge from card. This is very, very important. If you select replace from card, it will take all of the waypoints off your unit and replace it with the waypoints that are in this file that you choose from your next step. If you merge from your card, it will keep your existing waypoints and then add the waypoints that are on the card. So obviously we want to hit merge from card and then you can select individual files or all the files that are on this card. We're just simply gonna select a individual file and there we go. This is the basslake.gpx file that we uh, created in Google Earth, then converted to GPX. So we'll click on that. It's gonna go through its process. And there we go. If we go back to our map, there they go. Those are the same exact waypoints that we created on Google Earth. So right there they are on Google Earth and there they are now on our unit. So that is the simple way to do it via SD card. There we have it. That is uh, just a couple of the ways that you guys can utilize Google Earth and manage your waypoints, create new waypoints, etc. I thought it was pretty cool on what you can do with it. Hopefully you guys do as well. And there are a whole host of different things you guys can do with these techniques that I taught you in this video. Um, and stay tuned in the future because I'll have more things you can do with these kind of techniques. Um, but if you use the techniques that I showed you, uh, pretty straightforward. Once you grasp them, they're very simple to understand and simple to use. The main key is getting your files into that GPX format. And once you get it into GPX format, you are able to simply transfer to your unit. Uh, one of the two ways that I showed you in this video. So say you want to steal those waypoints from a buddy who's got a Hummingbird or a Lowrance, uh, get them out of their unit, convert them to GPX, upload them to your unit, and you're good to go. So uh, there you guys have it. I hope you guys liked this video. I know there was a lot to cover into it, but there's a lot of details that you have to go through. As always, stay tuned for more tips and tricks on MG Marine Tech. And if you guys aren't already, please hit that subscribe button. Until next time.